It's a beautiful day for the frontline city of Kherson. No sunshine, no clear blue sky. There will be fewer attacks launched by the Russians today. Someone has to do it, and do it here. That's the first reason. The second is that I'm doing something good here. Is it any different from our boys in the trenches? Dr. Oleksandr Chebotaryov is one of the few doctors who remains here in defiance of the daily attacks. He stayed through the city's liberation from Russian occupation in November 2022. The first day of the liberation, I raised the flag. Ever since the liberation, Kherson has been under constant bombardment by Russian forces. And so, all activity inside the hospital takes place without the benefit of daylight. The windows are boarded up from outside to keep the glass from shattering in a missile attack. I'm the head of the radiology department. I used to be responsible for consulting with other radiologists and identifying injuries on the radiology scans. But now I routinely do whatever comes up. What is this? Your home? Yes. And Russians? Kherson lies in southern Ukraine. The opposite bank of the Dnieper River is in Russian hands. The city was occupied by Russian forces for eight months until autumn 2022. Before the war, we had everyday injuries, especially from black ice, broken bones and so on. Now their injuries from mines are artillery shrapnel. Sometimes it gets difficult when someone has several injuries at once. A patient was brought to the traumatology center with a broken bone, but it turned out that he also been shot. Kherson is bombarded daily. The attacks can come at any time. But the hospital is prepared. A nurse guides us through the maze of underground wards. Everything a hospital needs is stored in the bunker. Over 200 beds have been set up down here. Surgery can even be performed here. A talent for improvisation helps. Donated commercial labels are pressed into service as dividers. This nurse doesn't want her identity revealed for fear of Russian reprisals. I never would have thought that all this would happen in our city. This is our Kherson. But all this just makes us stronger and braver. All the way to victory. Another strike. <laughs> but only a few patients and hospital personnel end up in the bunker. 
Сейчас я живу. Now I live in another apartment. Другом. Now they bomb every night over there too. We've got used to it. We're not afraid anymore. And that's exactly what really scares me. The doctors rarely have time to seek shelter. Chabotaryov is the only radiologist left in this hospital. The other 15 have all fled, either abroad or to other parts of Ukraine. His wife and little daughter also fled after their apartment was hit last year. At the time, their daughter Lisa was only four years old. Our home was destroyed. But we'll fix it, so you won't have to buy a new one. A bomb of some kind flew into it. I feel sorry for our home. Luckily, we got out in time, or we'd be dead. I don't want to die. Eighty percent of Kherson's population have left. Now it's like a ghost town. The few remaining people avoid open spaces. Playgrounds are barricaded. Shelters are placed near every bus stop. The people left here have learned to live with the war. Only near the supermarket is there somewhat more activity. This is one of the few still open in the city center. It's like an oasis in the midst of a war zone. Life here is full of contrasts. Where can you feel safe now? Nowhere can you be safe here. It can hit you at any moment, anywhere. I have animals at home and a wife who's seriously ill. I can't just pack up and leave. If you ask me, I'd rather see both presidents negotiate for 10 long years than go through one day of war here. We approach the Dnieper River and the front line. Before the war, this spot was a favorite place for young families to spend free time. That was my balcony. Dr. Chebotaryov's old neighborhood was caught in a combat zone. Sweet home. 
Here, we took a direct hit. My balcony was torn completely off. That day, he remembers, the bombardment was much louder and more intense. I drove away with my family. We didn't have any electricity anymore. Then around 2 a.m. my neighbor called and said a bomb had landed right in our apartment. At 6 a.m. I came back here and saw an enormous hole. My balcony was torn off. It was all rubble. If I had stayed in the room, I wouldn't have come out. Where you're standing now, there was a pile of concrete. It took us two hours to clear away the rubble. It's almost surreal, isn't it? It just keeps on and never stops. And at some point it doesn't surprise you anymore. The first days when the attacks were just starting, there was panic and bodies in the streets. Now we don't react to it anymore. One day you run into a co-worker and the next day you see his corpse in the pathology department. This is only an apartment, a material thing. Once the war is over, we'll fix everything again. For months after his wife and daughter moved away, he lived in the hospital. Then his parents fled, and he moved into their apartment. We go with him to the place where he grew up. He has very little time after work. He's always on call, even for a second hospital in the area that no longer has any radiologists at all. What's up? Happy Valentine's to you. Thanks, you too. Will you have time to come on your birthday? No. <laughs> Ivano-Frankivsk is a small city in the far west of Ukraine. The doctor's wife Italia and daughter Lisa have been living here for a year. <laughs> Do you see me? But the new apartment still feels temporary. Vitalia is also a doctor, but she hasn't found a new job yet. Or a daycare center for Lisa. So many people have moved to western Ukraine from the east that it's extremely hard to get a foothold for a new beginning here. But Vitalia says there was no other solution. Lisa has begun to understand that we're living through a war. She watched the news on TV with us. She started to realize that people are getting killed, children too, and she started to get frightened. Before she went to bed, she always asked if she would die, whether we'd see one another the next day or whether we'd be killed too. At this age, a child shouldn't be thinking about war and death. That's the reason we decided to leave. Lisa also understands why they had to leave their city. Because Kherson is being bombarded. It's a bad time for Kherson. But Papa's doing the best he can there.
from the front, the war always weighs on people's minds, even if life in this part of Ukraine is very different. The signboards commemorate people from Ivano-Frankivsk who fallen at the front. One of them was friends with Vitalia and her husband. It's horrible. It just never should have happened. Every day there are more of these pictures. A year ago, this boulevard was only half as full of them. People learn to survive in every situation. You get used to everything. You survive. 